About a year ago, I made a video about the last upgradable MacBook Pro. And, well, it's been a year and things have changed. A lot. In that video, I talked about how MacBooks have become less and less upgradable over the years and how one of the big ways Apple tries to profit off of you is through their storage pricing. So I made a video with this in mind and I said that the 2015 MacBook Pro was the last upgradable MacBook Pro. Turns out, I'll admit it, I was wrong. This is the 2017 No Touch Bar 13 inch MacBook Pro. And this is absolutely the last upgradable MacBook Pro. This is my girlfriend's 2017 MacBook Pro. It's the No Touch Bar version. And for the most part, it's still a pretty competent machine. I like using her laptop because it feels much less serious than mine. And maybe it's just me, but I kind of miss having physical volume keys. The only thing that's holding it back is the 128 gig storage drive, which is just abysmal in 2021. For reference, I think even my phone has more storage than that. She often finds herself running out of space, even though she only uses this laptop for college and she really needs it to study and learn. But if you want to learn something new, you should check out our sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of different classes for anyone who's looking to learn a new skill or find a new hobby. They have courses that are taught by real people who actually do this for a living and they have something for just about any topic. You want to learn photography, but don't know how to get started? Cool. There's a course for that. What about learning how to design your own logo? All right. There's a course for that too. I've recently been watching NKBHD's class on how he makes his videos, and I've been loving it so far. If you're a tech guy like me, you know this guy knows his stuff, and I'm still learning things from him that I didn't even know. Best part is, you don't pay extra for any of these classes. One flat subscription gets you access to thousands of these courses. And the first thousand people to use the link in my description will get their first month of Skillshare Premium for free. And after that, it's only around 10 bucks a month. Use my link in the description to start your free trial today. And thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. So not a lot of people know this, but the 2016 and the 2017 No Touch Bar MacBook Pros actually had a removable storage drive, but it's been proprietary up until now. So while you could technically open it up and upgrade the storage by buying proprietary parts online, Unless you really wanted to spend $500 on one terabyte of storage, uh, you were pretty much out of luck. Now, you can use an external drive, but the whole appeal of a MacBook is that it's thin and it's light, and I just know my girlfriend is going to lose this somewhere. <laughs> Fortunately, now there's a better and cheaper way to do it yourself. Now, I want to be clear. This isn't something that's particularly new or revolutionary, but odds are there's someone out there that doesn't know that they can upgrade their MacBook. If even one person happens to learn something from this video, I'll be happy. So I'm going to show you how you can upgrade your virgin 128 gigabyte model into a monster Chad one terabyte. So this is an adapter that you can find on Amazon for about 16 bucks. And it gives you the ability to plug in any NVMe SSD directly into your MacBook. Only thing is there is a catch. This is a Sabrent one terabyte NVMe drive. And you might've noticed it looks a little bit different. Since the adapter on this MacBook is really small, that means it needs a smaller than average drive to fit. Now, as long as you see 2242 on the box, that means it'll fit. You can technically put bigger drives in it, but there's no way it'll be secure and it could fall out. Now, before anything, I always recommend making a time machine backup. You'd never know what'll happen and worst case scenario, at the very least, you'll still have your files somewhere. You don't need anything crazy. I'll leave a link to the one that I'm using in the description. Okay, for this project, you really only need two screwdrivers, a P5 and a Torx T5 driver. If you don't know what any of that means, just use the links in my description to be sure you don't buy the wrong thing. It's only a few bucks, don't worry. Now, once you take out all the screws, you're gonna wanna grab something thin, like a credit card or a guitar pick, and just start running it all around the MacBook until you hear all the clips snapping. Then you can pull downward and it should just pop off. A suction cup really helps out a lot too if you're having trouble. It, it took me a couple of tries. Fuck. All right, we're inside. Now, you see the silver thing right here? That's the internal drive, and we're gonna be replacing it with this shiny new adapter. But first, we need to disconnect the battery. I've never seen a battery connector like this before, but it's not that bad, trust me. We're gonna slowly peel off this sticker covering the connectors, 
and this long cable right here, you're gonna gently lift the end of it and it should reveal a clip. Use your fingernail or some sort of tweezers to lift up the clip and it should be able to be pulled out. Then fold it all the way back so it doesn't touch anything. You can use some tape if you want. Then grab your Torx T5 screw and use that to unscrew this thing. Grab something that's thin and plasticky and just jam it in between the metal plate so the two metal plates don't make any contact. And there, the battery is disconnected somehow. <laughs> now there's two T5 screws holding it in and after that's out, we can peel off the sticker and use it as leverage to pull it out. All right, this is our drive. Unfortunately, I've yet to see any way to repurpose this drive into any sort of external storage. So for now, it's kind of useless. Now, let's prepare our new drive. <laughs> Talk about fancy packaging. Funny enough, this drive is actually smaller than the old one, but it holds much, much more storage. For some reason, this drive was supposed to come with a standoff screw, which it technically did, but it didn't come installed. Unless I'm missing something, there's no possible way to put this back on, so I think they might have messed up. <laughs> uh, I'll leave a link to an adapter that hopefully doesn't have this issue. I noticed at this point that it was a lot easier to install the adapter first, then put in the drive, so I suggest you do the same. For now, I'll just use some tape to keep it down until I can get a new adapter. Congrats! You just doubled or even tripled your storage depending on the size that you picked. Now we replug the power. Then, before I close it up, let's check to see we did everything right. And that question mark means that our transplant was a success. Awesome, okay, let's close this thing up real quick. It's not the same process as opening it, but you just gotta start at the corners and then push in and then slowly push down the bottom rest of the lid, making sure it's lined up with the bottom. Then you just start putting pressure all around until you hear everything click. All right, we're ready. Now into the software side. Okay, now it's time to take care of the operating system. Holding Command and R can get you into internet recovery mode with no flash drive required. In case you're wondering, the question mark that you see isn't scary, don't worry. It just means that the Mac sees that there's a drive in there, but there's no Mac OS installed on it for it to boot off of. He's, he's scared, he's a little lost. Keep holding on the keys until you see a little globe. Uh, if it never shows up, Turn off the Mac and just try again. Put in your Wi-Fi network and wait for it to reboot. It might be a little while, so just hang tight. After a few minutes, you should boot into internet recovery mode. This is where we can install macOS, but first we gotta reformat the drive so it can work with macOS. We're gonna click on disk utility, and if you did everything right, you should see a brand new, shiny one terabyte drive on your screen. Go on the left side under view and hit show all devices. You should see the name of the drive, like Sabrent some sum. Uh, if you do, you can hit erase, name it whatever you want. And the important note here is that the scheme has to be GUID partition. I, I was stuck on this for like an hour. Then you can hit erase and your drive is properly formatted. The hardest part is pretty much over now. Go back to the main menu and we should be able to reinstall macOS. Don't worry, this says hi Sierra, but we can update it to the newest update later. It's gonna take a few minutes, but after that, you should be booted back into your Mac and everything should look normal. Great, let's check and see that everything still works. And there it is, our one terabyte is all set. Beautiful. Now we can just download Big Sur or whatever the newest OS is by the time I upload this is. And once that's installed, we can use Migration Assistant to restore our data. We plug in our hard drive and we just choose a time machine backup that Gary? Who the hell is Gary? Is she? Uh, 
Well, after you restore your backup, uh, everything should look back to normal again. In, in, in terms of speed, they're pretty good. Anywhere from 1,700 to 2,000 megabytes on read and write. I didn't get a recording, but the old drive was around 7 to 800 megabits. And according to the box of the new drive, this is about as high as the drive goes. So it's pretty great performance. It's just as fast as my 2020 MacBook Pro, actually. I decided to stay with the laptop for a few days to get a feel for the battery life. And it seems I did lose about maybe an hour's worth of battery with the new drive. But honestly, I feel like that's kind of worth the trade-off for the amount of storage on this thing now. Uh, for reference, I decided to just load it up with a bunch of programs. The whole Adobe Suite, Photoshop, Premiere, Illustrator, uh, along with some other things like Word and PowerPoint. And it didn't even make a dent into my storage. It's kind of ridiculous. No doubt, I'm sure you guys will find some sort of way to fill it up pretty quickly though. And honestly, I think this is going to be the last MacBook we're going to be able to do this with. The 2018 MacBooks immediately reversed this and soldered on the storage. And with the direction that Apple's going in right now, what with the M1 MacBooks and all, pretty much everything is going to be integrated. Honestly, I try and hold on to these machines for as long as possible. Uh, I got this one for $550 on OfferUp, and you could probably get one for around the same price. Just to be super clear though, the 2016 and the 2017 no touch bar models are the only ones you can do this upgrade on. The 2018 won't work. The 2016 with touch bar won't work. The 2017 with touch bar won't work. If it has a touch bar, there's a 0% chance it's going to work. So just keep that in mind. If somebody asks in the comments if any of these work, I give my viewers 100% permission to bully them for not watching the whole video. Leave a like on the video if I managed to help you or you found this entertaining. And if you excuse me, I, I need to make a phone call.